Let's make a super speed mod of Sekiro using Cheating. Now, before we get started, to keep this video from being like 5 hours long, we're not going to re-explain things we've already covered in previous videos. But we'll have links to key related videos in the description for you, so feel free to check them out if you need to. And okay, in Sekiro, we're going to make our speed mod by manipulating the distance between the player's current position and the player's next calculated position. And in the game, Notice that we can travel side to side, up and down, and forward and backward for a total of three dimensional axes. And to track our playable character's position in this 3D world, each axis has a coordinate value contained inside an address. And if you're not sure how to scan for coordinates, by the way, we'll have links in this video's description that will show you how to do that. But okay, with the horizontal coordinate, we see that when we move around in the game, the coordinate changes to reflect our new position. And for this coordinate to change, there's a number being added or subtracted to it. And this number represents the distance the player will travel on the X axis. And the same thing happens for the other two coordinates. And since we have three addresses for the character's position, we also have three addresses for these distances, which represent the player's velocity. And let's see the velocity values in action when the player moves. Horizontal first. Right now, I'm standing still, so it's zero. As I walk slowly in this direction though, the velocity becomes a positive number and the coordinate is increasing. As I move faster in the same direction, the velocity becomes a bigger positive number. And when I sprint, the velocity is even higher. Then in the other direction, velocity is a negative number and that's causing the coordinate to decrease. And velocity drops even more when I move faster in that direction. And then when I stop, the velocity increases to zero again and the coordinate stops changing. And while depth is very similar, it decreases in this direction and increases in the other, opposite from the horizontal coordinate of velocity. But the vertical velocity only changes when the character is not touching the ground. And when the character jumps, the velocity starts off high, gets lower as he reaches the peak of the jump, then keeps descending until he hits the ground. And observing this behavior by jumping up and down in the game, I was able to easily find velocity since it's practically right next to the position coordinates in memory. Just keep in mind that each game's general axis direction is up to the developers, so it's possible that these coordinates could increase and decrease in reverse directions from Sekiro. Also, velocity won't be so conveniently close to position and memory in every game, so we'll be working on a video showing how to scan directly for velocity and we'll have a link to that in the description when it's done. But all right, with the addresses for velocity, let's see what opcodes write to them so we can make our super speed script. But wait, nothing is loading for the vertical or death velocity addresses. What the f**k's going on there? Let's take a closer look at what's happening here by highlighting the opcode for the horizontal coordinate, hitting more information, and then this F here. And with the view set to XMM registers and float, we can see that XMM1 is holding four float values. And the first three match our velocity address values rounded to the nearest tenths place. And XMM registers can not only store multiple float values, they can also perform other operations on all of them at once with a single line of code. Which is exactly what this opcode with the command move APS is doing copying all the floating points in XMM1 to the address starting at RDI plus 160. So RDI plus 160, horizontal, gets the first float value. RDI plus 164, vertical, gets the second. RDI plus 168, depth, gets the third. And RDI plus 16C gets the last. And because all three velocity addresses are being accessed by the same instruction, Cheat Engine isn't loading that instruction to these two debugger windows. But if I hit stop on the X velocity, the instruction loads in the next debugger window. And by stopping this one, it loads in the last. But anyway, in addition to move APS, there are other operations that can be done with every value inside an XMM register all at once. And what we're interested in for the speed mod is mul PS which will allow us to multiply all three velocity addresses at the same time. All right, let's do this. And I'm actually gonna use this line as my ejection point because I see that XMM1 is writing the velocity values here before it writes to the velocity addresses. 
which means we may get some interference with our speed modifier if we don't make sure the values in both sets of these addresses are the same. So, template, AOB injection, and in the script, let's allocate an address, name it something like this, and allocate 16 bytes, because that's the size of the XMM register that we're going to multiply. And now we declare not just one, but four float values in the address. And this will multiply all three velocities by the same value, so the speed increase will be consistent in all directions. But the fourth value we set to one, so that the last value in XMM1, which isn't a velocity axis value, stays the same. But okay, now we just type out the instruction using the mulps command. And just like the mulss command we've used in a previous video, the destination operand to the left of the comma must be an XMM register and the source operand in this case will be our allocated address. So what will happen is each of the four floats packed in XMM1 will be multiplied by its corresponding packed float on our allocated address and the new values will be stored back in XMM1. And this is everything we need, so let's test this. Normal speed. And super speed. <laughs> yeah, I think we can tell this is working. But of course, the last thing to remember is that, just like with damage health and other things, the outcodes for coordinates and velocity are also shared by other entities of the game. So as usual, make sure you isolate the player addresses from the other entity addresses so you can set your speed to whatever you want without affecting everything else. But not every game is going to be exactly like this. So if you're struggling, join us at Guided Hacking and check out our even more comprehensive guides. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.